To qualify as proof, something needs to be exclusive. If you have two different possibilities, then you don't really have proof between one or the other. So I just typed in Google proofs of heliocentrism. And I have this thing called Search Labs AI Overview, which I do find to be very useful, certainly when I'm trying to kind of get a quick summary of the official position. And it provides the supportive links. Let's start with this idea here of Kepler's laws. This is like the number one that we get, right? It's the idea that, well, we know that the Earth moves around the sun because we can map out all the planets. And that's what Kepler did, and that's called kinematics. And so really simply, Kinematics are how bodies move in relation to each other. You know, Austin walks around the pole. Austin moves his finger around the mic. Whatever it is, it's, it's in a circle around. And you could geometrically describe it. You can measure it. You can measure motion. It's about moving variables. But it's just basically taking notes of what is seen in terms of how things move. So that's called kinematics. How bodies move in relation to each other has nothing to do with forces, has nothing to do with why or how the thing is moving. It's just describing that it moves. Okay. So Kepler's laws are just kinematics, they're just geometry. It's literally just mapping out the way that the planets appear to move from the Earth. That's all it is. And we discovered that they, like, if you're able to, uh, there's this reoccurring relationship between them all and Kepler's laws works to describe that, that geometry. And even in the mainstream model right now of the heliocentric globe, that would work exactly the same if the Earth were in the center, not moving. It's kind of a glass half empty and half full situation. Either way you describe it, you're observing the same thing. So why would Kepler's laws be on this list? Why would Kepler's laws be on these mainstream articles claiming to prove it, right? Like, here we go, Kepler and Newton right here. Like, why? Because it's objectively not the case. They don't want to leave you with nothing. So they give you some fancy terminology to make it sound like you might have an answer. But it's a facade. It isn't a valid answer. And when you know their terminology, you know they're feeding you crap. Once you know what's in it, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Say, do you know that fruit is wax? Oh yeah, I wondered about the texture. <laughs> it's like Brian Cox's bowling ball on the feather. If you drop the bowling ball, is it moving? Or is it the earth that is rising up to the ball? It's all about your frame of reference. Kinematics can describe it either way. It doesn't prove one way or the other. Right. And so I hope everyone understands that. It's, it's really simple. Everyone understands the idea of uh, relative motion. And to quote Einstein, the struggle so violent in the days of Copernicus, between Copernicus and Ptolemy, um, which is obviously heliocentrism and geocentrism, was quite meaningless. It's just based on a coordinate system. Whether it is the Earth that is moving or the ball that is moving. Kinematically speaking, you're observing the same thing as the two draw closer to each other. And the two statements, uh, the sun moves around the earth and the earth is still, or the sun is at rest and the earth moves around the sun, are equally valid. They're, they mean the same thing. It's just, it's just a coordinate system preference. The equivalence principle. It's like if we think about this very simply, what, when you say, hey, do you have any exclusive evidence that the Earth moves around the sun? Do you have any proof of the heliocentric model? What they will say is something like the, the Kepler's laws or the movement of planets. So what you're saying is the proof that Earth is moving through space is that we see other things moving in the sky. How does that make do you, there's no there's no way you don't understand that that's illogical that isn't proof. And so it's the same thing it's like oh well because we see the sun move throughout the year. It's like your proof that the earth is moving is that the sun 
we can see the sun moving. But the sun isn't actually moving. It's the earth moving, making it look like the sun is moving. And that's proof that it's the earth moving. What? So, not only do you have the burden of proof, but like you have a strong burden of proof because on its face, you're claiming it's an egregious, like begging the question. And it's counterintuitive and it's antithetical to what we observe. So, very well said, Austin. Therefore, Kepler's laws don't prove one way or the other. And people, please, if you do a Google search on dogs on the internet and a banana pops up, please don't go around telling people that bananas are dogs. That is essentially what's going on here. Austin did a Google search of proof of the heliocentric model and Kepler's laws popped up. So when a lazy troll comes along and says, Kepler's laws prove that the heliocentric model is true, they're essentially saying bananas are dogs. <laughs> Don't be a lazy researcher. Do better than that.